Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into cheating girlfriends pregnant, but she doesn't know I had secret vasectomy. Come, let's explore these real life stories. I have some buddies at work that like to go out with their SOs on double dates. Sometimes, I was invited on several occasions, but let them know I'm not currently dating. So, what do they do? They get me a date, of course. It's a coworker of a buddy, so. We'll call her P. P was a very shy, quiet girl from a family that wasn't too strict or super religious. She seemed out of place at first, but looking back, I think she fit in with the crowd more than she let on. I won't give the SOs or buddies labels because they are not relevant for most of the story, but they are important for how she and I met and one or two other occasions. So, us three couples went out. We hit it off and became fast friends, drinking the night away, and I ended up kissing her and paying for a taxi to take her home. Six months later, P and I are living together, she moved in with me, and we are great together. We don't fight, and if we do, it's something silly that blows over seconds after it begins. One night, after we had done the deed, I looked down and noticed my protection broke. Panic mode engaged. I started freaking out and told her what happened. She immediately calmed me down and said she's on birth control, BC. I felt relieved, but then relief turned to surprise. She never mentioned this to me before, did she? She passed it off as something she mentioned to me, but I was busy with Fallout, New Vegas at the time, yeah, this was around when that game came out, so I probably didn't notice her say anything. Again, looking back, this should have been a red flag. I chalked it up to extra precautions on her part and felt really good about how well we worked together. She was being responsible for both our sake. Birth control, along with condoms, can only make things extra safe, right? Nope. She got sick a week later, complaining that she was always in the bathroom and couldn't hold food down. Yeah, you know where this is going. The P stands for pregnant. Now, I am usually a pretty calm guy. But man oh man, was I flipping my mind, not at her, mind you. I make pretty good money, enough for her to only work part time and go to school. I don't go to school. I work, and still do, but in a much higher position in a trade career, which I won't name for anonymity's sake. Babies change things, though. That meant she would have to stop school, stay home for several months, and then find a full time job. I wasn't worried about me, but her. I can manage, but she wanted to finish school and be stable enough so that if we ever decided to have kids, it wouldn't be in this kind of situation. Well, she ends up getting a pregnancy termination, begs me not to tell her parents who, again, are not super religious, but this is a big negative to them. It took months of her talking to them and me courting her to let us live together. She and I were both 21 at this time. So, of course, I wasn't going to say anything. I was almost shocked at her decision. That's right, hers. I hoped she would get one for her sake and mine, in all honesty. But I would have stayed and raised that child with her through hard times because I loved her. For about four months, we barely talked. I thought things were over. But then, one night, everything just magically went back to normal. I thought, yes, we are okay again. This was also a red flag, but in my excitement, I don't think I realized it. Now, having a big scare like that and knowing she was on BC led me to the decision some of you may or may not cringe at, a vasectomy. I had one. Now, I went in for the consult with my primary care doctor and was referred to where I had it done. A week of ice and paid vacation. Now, I know what you are thinking, and I saved some juice for later, just in case. And although I should have, I didn't tell P. Now, I know that you're thinking, WTF, but honestly, she was on break at the time, visiting family. I wanted to wait and let her know when she got home and not discuss it when her parents were around. I wasn't sure how they would react if they overheard. I'm sure you can see how much her family's opinion matters, and that will come up later too. I was back at work on light duty, and business picked up fast. I had no time to even text or call her, letting her know I needed to talk to her about something important. By the time she got home, we both got so busy that I didn't even mention it. 
This may seem odd since it's a major game changer for a relationship, but I was also a young man whose life was, and still is, mostly full of constant go, 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 work, work, work. Stuff just vanishes to the cold storage sometimes. Fast forward two and a half years. I was promoted a few times, was high on life, loved my so, and we were thinking about getting married when she finished school. By this point, our relationship had progressed enough that we no longer used BC pills or condoms. Now, she said she got an IUD to prevent pregnancy. I thought that was odd at first, thinking about how I was snipped. Oh well, maybe she just wanted to be extra sure. Well, not so much. About midway through August 2014, she gets sick again. This time we have no idea what she could have. I rush her to the ER and become the guy who took his soul to the hospital to find out she is pregnant. Now, the first thing most of you guys probably think I did was scream you or cheat her. Nope. I acted just as surprised as she did, told her it's fine, we can get through this, and I'm with her 100%. Now, state laws differ, and your results may vary. But here, unless the father signs a birth certificate himself, in person, it doesn't count. I made sure. Because the first thing I did after getting some time alone from her was see my company's attorney for a consult. He recommended a good person to seek legal counsel in paternal matters. A week and a half or so later, I met him and made sure if I had undeniable proof that I'm not the father, I would have no responsibility for the baby or P, according to our state laws. So, I had my assurances. And as far as she knew, it was probably mine, right? After all, we were not using any BC at all. None. Turns out. She had scheduled the appointment, had it put in, but it was removed because of complications that caused pain and swelling. This, I was not informed of. Now, normally, I leave personal belongings alone. I trusted her and did not want to be the overbearing so that looks through your stuff by accident. We both had our own phones, PCs, and tablets. So, she didn't suspect a thing when I searched through, literally, no joke, guys, hundreds of emails of her back and forth setting up dates, times, and prices. That's right, she was sleeping with people for cash, or so I thought. Turns out, she was actually doing it for free and selling meds that she had stolen from patients. The pregnancy termination she had was not the first. Oh, did I mention? She was in school to become an RN. She would sneak meds any way she could. She would take them from old people, young people, cancer patients. She was a sneaky one too. She hid all of this from me and her teachers, as well as her parents. Her biggest supply was using people she had previously been with slash sold to. She would have them get hurt, or help them get hurt, and then get them prescribed pain pills. I hope you stuck it out, and I hope this belongs here. For the entire time of her pregnancy, I said nothing. To her, her parents, her friends, her teachers. She was close to graduating and close to being a mom. Everything was so happy for her. Everything was going great. Well, I got an apartment and paid rent for it secretly. The place we lived in was in her parents' name. The reason being, at a moment's notice, they wanted to be able to kick me out for wronging their daughter. This turned out to be an amazing blessing. I started selling my stuff to put into a fund for the baby, but was really moving it to my new place. She thought I was crazy when I sold my gaming rig, laptop, and Xbox. I said, it's all for us, baby. Now, this next part was risky, but I had no choice. I needed some help. I talked to the buddy who set me up with her to begin with. They will be B and so. B had left the company I worked for, so this would not negatively affect him in any way. I needed more info on P's part-time job so that I could get back at her. So was her boss, and she was exactly the same to them on the outside as she was to everyone else. To this day, I kind of admire her ninja ability, but it's also why I have no regrets or guilt. I told them everything, showed them everything. B and so were shocked, sad, and sorry for me, sorry for her. Then, furious with her. How dare she manipulate them like this? So stated things had gone missing from the workplace, cash drawers short, but P was always covering some kind of way. 
She had been framing people and was just very careful and calculated in her plans. So said she, in all honesty, never looked real hard at her either. Her facade had everyone fooled. Well, lucky for me, so said in P's maternity leave, security cameras were replaced and were better quality. We made our plan then. And comes the week that she is due. She is wheeled into the hospital and stays for three nights before she gives birth. I have no problems with the child, as you will soon find out, but at the time, he was a symbol of misplaced trust and a broken heart. They have to take the baby away after a few minutes. He has jaundice, and although he seems fine, they want to be double sure. She reluctantly lets him go. P, what should we name our son? Me, ours? You mean yours? What color she had left drained. And she stammered to speak before I put my hand up and told her I got snipped six months after we started dating. Her face almost seemed to cave in. That confirmed for me the baby is only your baby. Not ours, baby, but yours and yours alone. Alone. Tears, nothing but tears. I told her that she was never to speak to me again and walked out. I told the medical staff that under no circumstances was my name to be on that certificate. I was a concerned former boyfriend that she cheated on, and she was a junkie. Lab reports on the cord blood, unfortunately, later showed this to be true, but the baby was fine. I told them I was only here to make sure her baby was all right. I was not to be contacted, and if she says I'm her boyfriend, don't believe her. If I needed to prove that to them, I would. I left, packed my stuff, and left for my new apartment. Pro Revenge I know what you're thinking, that was not really that harsh at all. I didn't think so either. I waited until she was back at home. I left my keys and $400 in an envelope at her place so that she had money when she was out and also to bait her. I knew that she would either A, buy some more pills, B, try to sell her stolen meds, C, maybe, just maybe, get her act together and fix herself, or D, cry to mommy, work, and school. I'll take A, B, and D for $400, Alex. That's right, she did all three. Now, I know at this point I'm okay on the work front. I'm also okay on the parent situation. The moment she was released, her parents picked her up because I wasn't there. She called them, complained, and told them everything. I was going to be thrown out, but what's this? I'm not there. She was probably upset she didn't get the joy of kicking me to the curb. Instead, there was the envelope for her with $400 and the keys. I don't know what went through her head, but she was already back into her normal routine before long. She must have thought I skipped town completely. Calling work leads to not hear. They were informed. Asking so leads to be hasn't heard from him. She thought she got off the hook with one baby and nothing else. A while later, she gets fired. Security footage shows her manipulating drawers and framing other employees. She tells her parents it wasn't her, they believe her. Next, her school gets a big package from an anonymous source, informing them she was recently fired for stealing and using illegal medication. Now, I am not sure how she got through school and the hospital without triggering a red flag for illegal medication in her system. I know they tested the cord blood from the baby, and I specifically stated she was a junkie. I never looked into it, probably should have. Her school has a zero-tolerance policy against the use of illegal medication. The package also contained the emails as well as messages to and from buyers, sellers, and anyone else she did shady stuff with. Did I mention the hospital she worked at also got a package? And the police. Her parents disowned her. Fired. Expelled. And CPA was on her case. She lost everything, including the baby. He's fine now, though. His real dad was found. She basically went back and looked for anyone that could have possibly been the father at that point in time. Kinda impressive, considering. The guy was 29, call him D. Had been divorced and was lonely. I understand. He had a great house and income, so he was given custody after a paternity test. Best part? The other couple we were with on the first date? She cheated on that guy. That's right. He actually still works at my company, too. 
I remember when he went through the divorce. I didn't talk to him much, so I had no idea he banged her. It only took one time. She never told anyone she met for romance she was in a relationship. He had no idea we were dating. He didn't talk with me enough, and I was in a different part of the workplace at that point. So, in the end, she has no home, no friends, no job, no career, a rap sheet, and now her kid is with his dad, and she gets zero visits. I'm single, still hang out with her parents, so, and D. I have my job, my apartment, and best of all, I'm not the baby daddy. If you love this story, and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.